The views and opinions expressed in this show and the comments on this channel are those of the speakers or authors, and do not reflect or represent the views and opinions of MediaWorks Studios, a division of We Podcast Incorporated. Once again, this is Canadian Mental Health Association, Windsor, Essex, Keep Connected podcast. Uh, you are here with Jenny Lee Almeida and my lovely co-host colleague, uh, Evelina. Hi, Jenny. How's it going? Oh, my hands aren't showing. As you can tell, <laughs> it's going, right? We are, we are here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, since we started this podcast and this recording and checking in virtually and, and, and moved to studio to uh, being virtual again, because we are currently back in the lockdown. Uh, so um, we've been adapting to a lot of changes, as I'm sure all of you have as well. And uh, part of today's uh, episode is going to be talking about uh, a recap and just checking in with ourselves where we were at the beginning when we kind of started checking in in April. Uh, we went to lockdown in March and things changed. Things opened up again. Uh, we were able to have a lot of wonderful guests on, on, on our podcast at Media Work Studio. And now everything has kind of changed and, and come around full circle to another lockdown. So um, today is a recap. Today is a recap of our last six episodes because we wanted to highlight some of the um, wonderful guests we've had and some of the learning we've, we've uh, gone through and even um, the transition between um, just getting comfortable uh, having these conversations with individuals during a pandemic and things like that. So, um, so one of the things I wanted to talk about today is um, being pretty flexible with ourselves. Uh, one of the things I think um, we're all kind of being really hard on ourselves because it's the holiday season, it's December, it's almost Christmas, and um, a lot of individuals may be experiencing a lot of anxiety. Um, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of doubt within themselves when they're making Christmas plans and when they're focusing on wanting to uh, set boundaries because of the well-being of others, uh, but also considering the well-being of themselves and their psychological well-being as well as their physical well-being. So it's been, uh, and it's going to be quite a roller coaster ride. So if you are experiencing those things right now, um, that is, you know, a collective. A lot of us are. Uh, and just, you know, one of the things I would suggest is if you make a decision, stick with that decision. Uh, so if you are trying to, to be safe and trying to stay home and trying to just be with your household and following whatever suggestions there are through the health unit, um, don't be afraid to set your boundaries and, and insert yourself in those things and um, finding other ways to connect with, with individuals, just like uh, we are too. I mean, of course, we all want to be together uh, physically. Um, and, you know, making those uh, goals in the future that, you know, maybe if we can't collectively be together right now, that's something we can focus on in the future and all be healthy and be able to do that uh, when, when, it's, when it's safe to do so, you know. But um, it's definitely a difficult time for a lot of people. Absolutely. And thanks so much, Evelina, for reminding my, myself and, and, and all the listeners out there flexibility and I think what I also heard from you and I know you're going to agree every single one of our guests that we have had you know in the studio with us a lot of vulnerability flexibility and through a lot of the stories we heard is time <laughs> you know and I know that's something that we don't like to listen to and I, I I can almost hear my mother saying when I was little you know time just just more time let time pass and you know that's the last thing I want to hear <laughs> you know right now especially now but nothing is permanent and sometimes that's what I keep reminding myself right now is those roller coasters of those emotions and so much uncertainty and so much 
not knowing, I just keep reminding myself of what my mom would say. Time helps, time heals, time passes. And it's just like every day I'll, I'll, I'll feel better. You get better. You, you, you feel you're able to tolerate some of those more intolerable emotions, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And, and I think, you know, uh, a lot of individuals, including myself, when the lockdown first started, it's like that uncertainty and that fear was very, very high. And we all, I think, learned something from that first lockdown. And we've built tools and skills and, and an understanding of ourselves and not knowing not where we don't want to go to a point of emotional distress and beyond, you know, things like our window of tolerance that we talk about a lot. Uh, and get into that distress state. So whatever learning you've had uh, as an individual from the first time, like you, this pandemic started, pull on those resources, pull on those strengths and the things that really help you get through and get by and maybe hone in a little bit more on those things. And um, and so social supports, like even just having family that is understanding, that is supportive and that's um, understanding is, is, is just surrounding ourselves with those individuals and uh, try not to pay too much attention to the things that kind of bring us heightened stress, you know? Absolutely, you wanna, it's almost like we wanna lean into our moments of joy. We wanna lean into anything that feels nice, lean into a little bit more, take a mindful pause, a moment to really reflect like, ooh, yay, I'm feeling, um, I'm feeling like happy. I'm feeling peaceful, I'm, I'm feeling, okay and i just keep thinking about natalie <laughs> um natalie was is an amazing um advocate and she has her own instagram handle uh gutsy feeling natalie was able to really offer for me at least i walked away with getting to know yourself we really focused on that pod podcast episode of lena about self-awareness and how it's like that mind body connection and we talked a lot about how like when stress rears his little head or like when car you know like life throws you those cards that you're dealing with a lot of our symptoms sometimes we manifest it and it could be physical symptoms cognitive emotional but it's just getting to know yourself and i really walked away intentionally focusing i remember i spent the summer really trying to name my emotions any other word except anxiety <laughs> <laughs> like I was trying to be like, ooh, I'm disgusted. Ooh, I'm irritated. I'm annoyed. I'm nervous. I'm I'm tense. Because it's all about getting to know ourselves. Exactly. And and labeling emotions is very powerful because when we have words for emotions, it's a lot easier to kind of be able to figure out a way to manage them, right? Because if, and uh, you know, gratitude journaling, right? That was a huge thing. Um and, and just keeping track of the things that do keep us well or, or that help us keep us well. And obviously we are all gonna have bad days. And and if you take a look at Natalie's Instagram, uh, Gutsy Feeling, like she has days where she's very honest. She's like, today's not the greatest day. And she's working on something that's working towards a wellness that maybe would require a little bit more time that day. And it, it, is, it is a challenge sometimes to, um, to you know, consciously do that, but um, I find if I've talked to anyone who's struggled with their mental health or physical health, um, that self management and learning those tools and using them has really been beneficial to their wellness. So I think anybody, um, you know, anyone can do something that might work for them, and we, it doesn't mean it has to it has to work for everyone, but it often is something that is very very helpful. Absolutely. You know what I was just thinking about right now, something that I, I will most likely continue to do, and it was Tina Shimshak. Um, we had a wonderful mental health advocate on our podcast, and it was all about keeping connected, keeping connected in terms of when we tend to not do well. 
whether we consciously do it or whether we are unaware that we do it, we tend to retreat, we tend to isolate, we withdraw. And I know for sure, 1000% when I'm not doing well, I, I do, I tend to kind of pull away, I pull back, I withdraw. I think we all, wouldn't you agree, wouldn't you agree, Evelina, like to varying yeah. degrees, I think yeah. we all start, that, that's how we connect, how we figure out, hey, what's going on? We start noticing these behaviors and changes. And Tina Shimshak started this beautiful thing uh, in times when she wasn't doing well. And it was part of almost like her recovery, her treatment plan for her mental health. And I love it. And it's, um, and I can't remember the name right off the, it was a purple, the purple, purple card, envelope. Purple, purple envelope. envelope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was all about, so she had sent all of her friends, um, you know, send me a letter and put it in a purple envelope and mail it to my house and I'm not going to open them. And she had like a shoebox full of these purple envelopes. And she indicates that in moments when she's not doing well, she always has this shoebox of purple envelopes. And to me, all I thought was, my gosh, I need something like that because that is one way that we all can keep connected, especially when we, we start to withdraw from one another right now, because it is hard. We're all, we're all Zoom fatigued. I'm just going to throw it out there. I believe that amidst a second wave, a second lockdown, for me, that's the part that weighs heavy on me. And I don't know about you, Evelina, but like, um, I'm, you know, I'm an optimist. I am, I'm cheery. I'm, I'm hopeful. But then all I thought was, oh no, oh no, you're not catching me on Zoom. Like I'm Zoomed out. <laughs> yeah. So how can we keep connected for the next like little bit? Mm -hmm. Right. And one of the things uh, recently, um, I think a lot more people are getting more creative in terms of like even Christmas gifts of what they'd like to give in other individuals. So like things like um, getting photos printed that you haven't had printed in a long time, or making a calendar, uh, you know, giving a thoughtful gift in that regard, um, whether, you know, physically distance is dropping it off at of someone's house, just so they have a memory, right? You have something to look back on that was a, a positive experience and memory uh, that, you know, I mean, we're all, I, I, I'm thinking about the last time I went to maybe a concert, the last time I, I, I did something fun. I'm not really, I don't have to necessarily be upset about that because I do look forward to that and I believe we will get back to that in the future, but I'm really appreciating those moments, right, that we, we did have. I agree, I agree. As you, as you were speaking, I'm like, ooh, I have a really good holiday activity. Uh, it's for those of us that are celebrating this joy time of year, how about we... Um, how to decorate our our Christmas trees? If uh, you have a tree in your in your home, I thought right away I would just decorate mine with uh, oodles of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There, there's my there's my comedic self for a yeah. little bit. We have large supplies of it at home, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, so yeah, holiday suggestions. I'm sure we all have like different creative ways of, of kind of celebrating this year. Um, Another guest we had, and I'm thinking about individuals who may be celebrating the holidays a different way and uh, individuals who may be experiencing uh, struggles with homelessness right now. Um, I know the community has really come together to provide a lot of, you know, supports uh, for organizations that have been supporting individuals who are experiencing homelessness um, and that one of them would be Salvation Army, right? So uh, Ashley was on the show and she talked a lot about, uh, you know, how would anyone could go from, you know, having, being employed, things change, you don't have a lot of supports, you don't have a, you know, a lot of family supports, and all of a sudden you're experiencing homelessness because it's hard to maintain, um, you know, your finances or something happens um, and things change very rapidly. So I think the takeaway for me there was that, uh, and just like with any sort of mental health issue is that it could affect anyone at any time and no one's immune to it. No. So, uh, that being said, it's like, you know, people have this idea of somebody who may be experiencing homelessness, right? Uh, just like they have an idea of the stigma related to somebody experiencing mental health issues. And it's, um, you know, 
that is not helpful. <laughs> that stigma and that idea that it, it only affects certain people um, isn't helpful and especially isn't helpful when it comes to being compassionate and loving to our neighbors, to our friends, to other people that may be struggling with something right now. So definitely it was a pleasure to have Ashley on. It was, and lean in, and and for all those uh, foodies out there, lean into that joy of cooking or baking or doing both and uh, trying it all out as well. <laughs> so <laughs> Ashley reminded us of being on the front line, you know, being those helpers and being the importance of helping others, but also reminding ourselves that we as helpers also have to really, really care for ourselves. So, you know, <laughs> we can't pour from an empty cup and, you know, it, it's caring for ourselves and not forgetting to do those things that do bring us those moments of joy. And I know for Ashley, it was, you know, going on Instagram and all those foodie places. And um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we had uh, Marcel and Frank on, which is, uh, first of all, we had two guests on together, which is a bit different for us, but very interesting. And, and it was a wonderful conversation with them about relationship between uh, being an athlete and mental health and culture uh, in those, uh, in sports and through their personal experiences with football and also focusing on, you know, I remember the, you know, the, the gym, the mental health of fitness, we have to keep our minds fit. We have to uh, work on those things and focus, like you keep talking about that, what brings you that strength? You know, individuals may focus on, oh, if someone's suffering or doing, not doing so well, uh, for, put a lot of attention towards those things. But when they are doing well, it's like, that attention doesn't go on because I think collectively, oftentimes, if if a lot of people are experiencing um, that public health feelings of illness or being sick or being traumatized or be experiencing difficulty, it's easier to focus easier to focus on that, right? Uh, but when someone kind of gets through on the other side, uh, that's you don't get as much attention towards that. So I really really liked highlighting. Uh, Marcel and Frank, how they've been able to overcome obstacles, be resilient, and create this for themselves, like the strength of, of resilience and, and being able to now help other people. Um, it was an amazing, amazing episode. I really loved it. I did too. And it brought me back kind of to my childhood. I'll be honest, like team sports, like figure skating, it was a big part of my life for like 13 years. And, you know, what I, what I took away from them and from Peter, because Peter was our next guest and Peter, oh, awesome individual. He works at Noah's house, but Peter's story, um, you know, really centered around sports. And, and I know that, you know, it resonated obviously with Frank and with Marcel and Peter brought it back again, uh, you know, to hockey, but it was team, the camaraderie, being able, especially when we're speaking about men's mental health. And again, you know, I, I, I don't have that firsthand experience, but I love hearing from individuals that are courageous enough to be able to tell us their story and, and let us know, you know, how are we able to break the stigma? And I think it's through building a community where we feel safe. And I think that's what Frank and Marcel and Peter were talking about is when you do feel safe, when you do have a support. And for those of you listening in, you can have one support, you can have 20, you can have 50. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Even if you just have that one and it's super meaningful and you feel you feel safe and you know that that person can be there, right? In whichever form they're able to be there for you. But that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. As human beings, we thrive on social connections. And from all three of those men, thank you. Because I know the stigma around men's mental health and mental illness, it is getting better but i do believe that a lot still suffer in silence because of that 
those stereotypes that we, we, we really do have in our society and it's sometimes really perpetuated in social media. I don't know, that's just my opinion. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I think it is. I think that's how things continue, right? And that's how things grow. Uh, and, and, you know, we all have our, our attitudes and stigma and, and some of them are pretty unhelpful. And especially you have about feeling safe and feeling vulnerable, to be honest, about experiences from even the past that don't even maybe relate to you as a person anymore. It takes vulnerability and courage to be able to talk about those things. So someone being able to open enough to talk about them and feel safe enough to talk about it, uh, you need you require a certain atmosphere, environment, or support. Uh, and and without that, you know, without without feeling like you could be honest with your feelings and how, how you actually are experiencing things and being vulnerable, it's it's very lonely. So. Uh, I hope, and I hope everyone realizes if you have or are going to watch the episodes or going to rewatch the episode, is that it was quite difficult for some of our guests to be so honest and open, uh, just like it would be for me if I was a guest. Uh, and and imagine yourself in their shoes and, and, and what they're sharing and how valuable that is because um, they're really, really being honest and really appreciate that they were able to, to come on and do that. It is so true. So, you know, I'm saying it from the bottom of my heart. I'm really, truly grateful for all of the individuals out there, you know, with that lived experience currently still living, still gaining experience every day, right? And thank you for that privilege of being able to hear your story because I know that as we hear our, you know, one another stories, it gets embedded in my story of support and recovery and growth and I never know when I'm going to pull from it so I'm telling you all thank you um you know I I really do um it, it is why Evelina and I really started the podcast especially about keep connected it's all about connections and getting to know ourselves but also fostering that self-awareness in ourselves, but in others and mutually supporting one another. Um, So you know what, Evelina, I think maybe what we can do right before we end off our very last podcast for 2020, we we could let everyone know, remind some of our wonderful resources out there that we have in our community. Um, So as Evelina speaks if you want evelina i do have a slide that i can put up there so then that way um sure yeah i could yeah i I I think uh you'd want to maybe we can just touch on a couple things because it's it's really important that we remind ourselves you know there are a lot of resources but sometimes i don't know about everyone but i'm trying to like cautiously be mindful of how much time I'm on the internet. (laughs) So sometimes when we are looking for resources, we might start getting sidetracked by looking at everything is on our phones now. Um, So I'll share my screen. Oh, Evelina is going to allow me to share my screen. Oh yes, one second, (laughs) please. Um, Okay, there we go. So I was just reminding everyone about the... We have a wonderful collaboration with Hotel Du Grace Healthcare, CMHA. We have a mental health addictions and urgent care center. It is located at 1400 Windsor Avenue. An urgent care clinic, uh, you know, the quickest way to answer a question, when should I use an urgent care center? You know, we usually, Evelina and I explain it in the sense, you know, in regards to your physical health, when would you go to an urgent care center as opposed to going to an emergency room, right? So it is an urgent mental health or addictions concern, but you're not needing required, like you're not needing hospitalization. You are safe or the individual that you're looking for supports, they're currently safe. And, and also uh, just to note the hours uh, that it is not 24 hours a day. So uh, if you need to see someone after after 8 p.m., uh, I would recommend uh, still going to the ER if it is an emergency. Uh, and also between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., uh, the transitionables 
because the Civility Center or the Christ Mental Wellness Center is open uh, for walk-ins and 24 hours a day phone uh, supports uh, by a social worker who would be able to help and discuss with you whatever needs you have and, and give you some supports and some direction would be the Community Crisis Center phone line at 519-973-4435. Anytime, call that number and you will be able to speak with someone right in. And then it's been accessed quite a bit since the pandemic has occurred. So people know about it. That's not gonna change. This is gonna be something that's pretty stable and gonna be a part of our community mental health supports uh, for forever. <laughs> so, so please don't be afraid to call that number. Yeah, and if, you know, I always encourage anybody, if you are listening from Windsor, you know, 211, if you're listening from outside of Windsor, Connects Ontario, if you're, if, you're, if you're listening from the States, right, there is a National Suicide Prevention Hotline. It's always really taking out that extra little time to find what it, hey, I just heard Evelina, apparently. We're getting our own three, yep. Yes. So in Canada, it is going to be moving forward for the advocacy of all that work that was done in getting a three digit number for a national suicide prevention hotline, which, mm -hmm. which is really awesome. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Yeah. What will yeah. be your one tip for the holidays that you're going uh, to intentionally lean into to remind yourself? I think just honestly, just kindness for self and kindness for others. Um, just trying to be mindful, enjoy the, the small moments, not getting too overwhelmed with plans and presents and all this stuff, just uh, being okay with that. Wherever you are, however it's happening, just being okay with where you are. Because you know what? Remember this perspective. Is this going to matter in two weeks? Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe what you're so concerned over uh, and, and beating yourself up for the, uh, you, we're all trying the best we can. We're all trying the best we can. We're all going to do the best we can. And, um, you know, just be transparent and don't be too hard on yourself. I love it. Mm -hmm. So you heard it from Evelina. Kind to yourself, kind to others. So take a lot of compassion for yourself, perspective. <laughs> and from me, as icky as an emotion feels sometimes, um, you know, I've been trying to name it, to tame it. Like, seriously, like, and I'm not taming it, but I'm getting a better vocabulary. I'm increasing my resiliency. Hey, I think we've all collectively increased our resiliency and our adaptability, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 2020 mm -hmm. was the year of, we have all increased our resiliency, um, but I'm going to pause and, you know, really focus on those moments of gratitude because I know that a lot of, joy is out there and we just have to find it sometimes so mm -hmm. thank you all for listening and uh evelina to my wonderful co-host uh thank you Jim. cheers yeah thank you <laughs> yeah, for yeah, six yeah. awesome episodes yeah and thank you for it's been a pleasure uh all year checking in virtually or in person and working with you and uh and i'm looking forward to 2021 i really really am <laughs> so to new things and new projects coming in I thank you. Okay. Great. Bye.